you know, facing the dreads of, uh, of what's going on with the economy. And, uh, and I figured we should talk about some, some, some of the bigger topics that, that are coming into the, into the fold, right? Some of the conversations we never thought uh, that would come into the fold. So I'm introducing a brand new segment called The Bailout, uh, which is all about the economy. Because what's funnier uh, than finances, you guys? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> if I go down in history as anything, I'm 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 going to be the finance comic. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Boy, this guy really knew banks. <laughs> so we're going to dive into this section. Uh, so we talked earlier about trying to look for a cure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're trying to look for, look for a cure, but right now we have a financial system that is widening the gap of income inequality, uh, proving that a profit-only economic system makes money as a limiter for most of us, right? A Jeff Bezos, uh, pictured here, uh, is getting close, <laughs> just in case you didn't know, is getting closer to being the world's first trillionaire. As the rest of us are wondering how we're going to keep up food, with food and, and rent and all of our necessary expenses. We're currently living in a society where the ultra-rich, like Jeff Bezos, the Waltons, the Gateses, the Tim Cooks, are all able to hide their money on <laughs> offshore accounts on unheard of islands. Right? That's when you know that you have a fucked up economic system. When <laughs> currency sees beaches more often than the working class does. <laughs> like right now there are hundred dollar bills getting a beach tan and sipping mojitos <laughs> while the most essential of all of us are unsure if we're going to see the sun tomorrow and have to hide all of our money in used Serta matters mattresses <laughs> look capitalism right now is operating like nascar we just go around in circles over and over again, burning fossil fuels, while those in the stands just drink beer to sedate themselves with the pride that this cycle is, is going to do something great for them. Okay. Eventually, there's like a fiery crash, and then we bail out the car and get it back on the road again. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we never stop to think, maybe we should just slow down a little bit and think, What's why are we racing around in a circle like this anyway? You know, but the circle is important because it is a cyclical reminder to buy more shit. <laughs> right? we, we see the car with the word tide written on, on the side of it, and we're probably going to try to go get more laundry detergent, even though we only own one shirt and no pants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I will say, you know, we would know when the deep state starts getting really desperate is when they start taking up ad space on NASCAR. Right? <laughs> like, like when the fuck Venezuela car comes out, then you really know. <laughs> that, they're, that they're like desperate in need for propaganda. Yeah. Sidebar, uh, if there, even if there was a fuck Venezuela car, it would, it would <laughs> just everything about that car would be wrong, right? Like, it would always come in last. The tires would be on fire. And <laughs> <laughs> the driver would always be claiming that they're the best as drunkenly as they possibly could. <laughs> <laughs> we're number one. We're winning. We're winning. Everybody look at how we're winning. And it's like, you're, you're literally on fire right now. You should... <laughs> <laughs> you should sit down. Oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> now, this widening income gap has brought up the idea of universal basic income yet again. Now, this idea was popularized by presidential candidate Andrew Yang, pictured here, and his notorious <laughs> Yang gang, not pictured. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's too many of them for me to draw. So, <laughs> 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 <The> universe, 
but universal basic income, or as the cool kids call it, UBI, and just in case you're wondering, I am one of the cool kids, um, <laughs> is, is basically a monthly payment given to every adult in this country to cover their basic needs, right? UBI gives citizens an actual leg up financially to cover essential basic needs like rent, health, food, water, and recreation. It is a viable solution to ensuring the working class is taken care of as the landscape of labor changes and evolves. And UBI is also a cure to the greed-based cannibalistic NASCAR capitalism we're living in now. <laughs> now, this is, a, <laughs> this is a controversial idea and has received a ton of pushback from neoliberals and conservatives alike. Democrats like Nancy Pelosi, pictured here. Uh, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is a very accurate rendering, guys. <laughs> All of those wrinkles are exactly where they need to be. Uh, <laughs> but Democrats like Nancy Pelosi refuse to even say the words universal basic income because it's too closely aligned with socialism. Like, like Nancy Pelosi is legitimately scared that if she says universal basic income, that the, the alien thing will pop out of her neck <laughs> with the head of Lenin screaming, Bolshevism! <laughs> <laughs> You guys are... Oh, he's getting the hell out of there. Yeah. This is, uh, check this out. This is like a little animation that I can do. With it. <laughs> <laughs> to some people, this is going to haunt their dreams, and I think it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the conservative argument is to pick yourself up by your bootstraps, right? Work hard, do better than the person next to you, and then you will get all of the riches, which is a problem because what if you don't have boots? Where do we go from there, right? If capitalism sold all of the affordable boots to the next highest bidder, and then that highest bidder is selling each part of the boot at a higher markup to people who don't even need boots, what the fuck are we supposed to do then? <laughs> nice. Right, UBI is basically giving you boots to start with. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what it's doing, right? Yeah. Look, this argument didn't work when we weren't in a global pandemic, which put millions of people out of work, right? So, so to use it now, when when there are a bunch of people that are struggling to pay their rent and their bills and everything, and you and you keep using the bootstrap argument. You are just a dick that's not willing to accept reality. <laughs> right. And besides, in the midst of a global pandemic, I don't really think boots are something you want to be touching a whole lot. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 this needs some explanation. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. Both sides agree that if we implement the idea of uh, universal basic income, people will just stop working, right? Which is probably true because it'll be the first vacation they've had in, like, fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> They also say, well, this is all handouts, right? And people shouldn't be getting handouts. And look, I would agree with that argument if we bailed out citizens instead of banks in the moment of a financial crisis or just because it's a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that argument if homeless people ask for like more than $1 to feed themselves or get drugs. <laughs> like, guys, inflation has gone crazy these days, right? A dollar isn't even gonna be, buy you like half a sandwich or even like one hit of heroin or a snort of cocaine. <laughs> so let's be clear about what UBI is. UBI is not a handout, it's balancing the scales. Now this would essentially transform the way we look at work. You know, instead of 
sitting in your car fantasizing about murdering your asshole bosses and causing traffic and going into a cubicle to listen to a Karen, I'm sorry, Karen, uh, to talk <laughs> about her mediocre kids and thinking about how quickly you can turn this keyboard tie into a noose. <laughs> 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 we would probably use all of that energy to better use, right? We would probably use it to improve humanity. UBI would allow us to spend more time with family, re-upping on education, and turning your passions into a career. Yeah, now, yeah like, you know, I'm and a here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I get it. There's it's going to take a little bit of transition, right? I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to go uh, visit the doctor for this weird, strange thing that their face is doing uh, called uh, uh, smiling, actually. Yeah. The working class hasn't collectively seen a smile in over 100 years. One person laughed at that. Okay. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> now, this is the pursuit of happiness, right? Turning your passions into a career. That is the pursuit of happiness, which is something that was written in our own Declaration of Independence. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And yes, that also sounds like I'm about to sell you a Ford F-150 for a very reasonable <laughs> price. <laughs> but it's also what the Declaration promises to Americans. And being that UBI would allow you to pursue your passions as your career, thus leading you to be more happy, this means that this socialist idea is as American as apple pie, which we'd all be able to eat more of. If we baseball, had <laughs> boring baseball. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think UBI would mix baseball. <laughs> <laughs> We would make we would make that sport more fun by adding like wolves or something into it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do understand that there's going to be a lot of pushback to this, right? Because we're people are going to look at this and be like, "Well, great! Now we're going to have a bunch of guitar playing hippies all over the place," and that's assuming that people want to be guitarists, right? It's not like UBI will cause 300 million versions of Wonderwall. <laughs> One is probably enough, you guys. Yeah. And after yes. all, you're my wonder no. what what wonder wonder wall wonder wall. <laughs> That's it. Wonder wall. Wait, what? Wonder, wonder Wall. That's the one. That's the one. That's it. <laughs> no, it's too late. Kind, Don't. <laughs> kind of disturbing. Hey. <laughs> As I matched that pitch perfectly, so I don't know what that says about you guys if you didn't. <laughs> Look, with UBI, there are going to be some people that will choose to pursue the arts, right? But I have some friends that hate music. Some of you clearly in here don't appreciate musical <laughs> There, There are some people that, that will pursue science, right? Some people that will build with their hands, work on cars, cook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's going to be some people be like, yeah, but what about those other jobs? like janitors or, or these tasks that people find like, like, you know, despicable or whatever. It's like, first of all, if janitors in these manufacturing jobs are so damn important, why not pay them more and treat them better in society? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you think it's ooky and those jobs are treated as some weird form of strange punishment? Okay. Well, if you think that, then maybe you should just shut the fuck up because your point is moot. <laughs> The second counter is the, that automation is on its way. And in a pre-pandemic world, UBI was tied into the fact that most of the jobs we have now can be done by a robot run by a floppy disk. <laughs> now, manufacturing jobs aren't 
going away because we have to keep making consumer goods, right? God forbid that a suburbanite soccer mom goes one day without having her lavender scented vibrator. <laughs> 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 but at least at least that vibrator would would be made you know for kind of perfectly you know there, there wouldn't be any problems of bored employees or human error and it's not just vibrators you guys all of our technology and tools would would end up being made by automated automated parts right so instead of chinese children making your iphone it's tiny little robots making it instead which I think is like way more adorable because, you know, like less <laughs> slavery. So. <laughs> less slavery is always good. Less slavery is, I think it's the most adorable thing in the world. <laughs> like when I'm, when I, when I go on dates, that's the first thing I ask is like pro or con. So I don't date much. So. <laughs> <laughs> But look, if even even jobs like waitresses and servers, right? If they were automated by robots, there'd be far less ass grabbing by drunk college kids or <laughs> like drunk drunk adults. Well, just drunk humans. <laughs> <laughs> because robots technically don't have asses, you guys. <laughs> also, they're programmed not to deal with sexual harassment. Okay, her central <laughs> processing is up here. <laughs> that one took a minute. <laughs> not just, no, look, I, not just that. I, I think we'll also p see a major reduction in crime in our society, right? If we're all a lot more financially stable and happy, we're more inclined to help each other out rather than try to steal money or goods from other people. And if you do commit a crime, it'll be because you're like really passionate about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> just one fucking criminal. <laughs> <laughs> UBI will also redefine the term crimes of pa passion. It'll redefine that, it'll be amazing. <laughs> Look, universal basic income will return power back to the people. Politicians and corporations are, that are against it are just scared, right? Universal basic income gives us worth in who we are and what we do. The experiment of capitalism is failing, and now we're all debating solutions, and UBI can be a solution that works. Automation and universal basic income allows us to monetize and pursue our passion, which allows us to realize our true capabilities which then allows us to help each other, which contributes to the large, major advancement of our species. We get to become good people and just continue on a better human legacy. Real happiness comes from helping each other out and realize our true capabilities. The Declaration of Independence, which I'm not saying we don't need, we absolutely do, but maybe we can tweak it a little bit but in to, to say that, that we have the right to liberty, happiness, and truth, which I know Sounds like a commercial for the new line of Fords, which I can give you at a very reasonable price. <laughs> <laughs> and that's been your bailout. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the, the, the segment. Should we go back to the Nancy Pelosi one again? Just for... <laughs> that was the best by yeah, far. I mean, yeah. bigger, yes, for sure. Yeah, I that's feel like we'll, do, we'll, we'll take a look at it one more time. Uh, just so we really solidify this one <laughs> yes. into everybody's brains. Uh, yeah. hope everybody has well, my mind forever. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I hope everybody has uh, beautiful, wonderful dreams. <laughs> Based specifically on this image. <laughs> oh. Now I can never do acid. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. I <laughs> hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel for, uh, for more. There's going to be daily videos going up uh, on this channel. Uh, I am also uh, going to be performing virtual live stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. 
Uh, I've done a couple of these and they've been super, super fun. So thank you to all the people that have already purchased tickets and uh, come out to these shows on a regular basis. They're, they're pretty fun. I'm going to be doing them every single Friday in the month of June. Tickets are available for those right now on my website at krishmohan.com. So it's June 5th, June 12th, June 19th, and June 26th, going at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, if you're in the other time zones, I think you can figure out what, what time that <laughs> these shows are going to be on. Uh, they are going to be, each show is going to be a little bit different. They're going to be covering topics like the one uh, in the video that you just watched. Uh, again, you can grab your tickets at krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N every Friday at June, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and uh, if you are a sustaining member, you get a free ticket to every single one of these shows, uh, and you can become a sustaining member over uh, on my website as well. And uh, I know pe I know times are tough, uh, so if you are in a financially precarious situation, please send me a message uh, or an email, and I will happily give you a code that will get you a, uh, a free ticket to attend these shows. Uh, I'm also releasing my brand new stand-up comedy album, which if you're a sustaining member, you get an early, uh, early release version of, early, uh, early copy of. Uh, it is available on my Bandcamp page to pre-order right now, and it comes out June 1st. So you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com, get, uh, get your copy of it uh, for only a dollar. You can pre-order it for only a buck. If you want to donate a little bit more, that would be awesome as well. Uh, there are more videos like this coming up. I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, a bunch of live streams pretty regularly from my Facebook page and uploading and releasing videos via the YouTubes and uh, and the, on the audio podcast versions as well. So stay tuned. Make sure that you like, make sure that you share, and make sure that you're subscribed to these pages because content like this often gets, uh, gets suppressed. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for hanging out. And uh, till the next one, we'll see you on the road. Thanks.